find swearing hilarious. But you may not. You have been warned, right? Just like the suit, yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's bleeding great, isn't it? Pity about the impression. That's, uh, that's overwhelming. Thank you very much. That's very, very nice. Uh, so, um, I've had some weird experiences recently. I live in South London and uh, it's getting quite scary around there. And I was mugged recently for the first time. Has anyone been mugged in here? Not in here. They've got security. <laughs> in anyone been mugged? You, sir. You've got cash point crime written all over you. But, uh, no, it's quite scary. I was just, uh, this bloke just came up to me out of the shadows. Um, not Cliff Richard's backing band, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> No, because he would have had to approach me like this, wouldn't he? <laughs> just one for the old folks there. No, he, he just went, Oi, mate! I've got a knife in my pocket, give me 50 quid. And I went, Ah, oh, but I don't know you've got a knife in your pocket. And he went, I don't know you've got 50 quid. <laughs> That's the gamble we're both taking. <laughs> Existentialist muggers, quite weird. Look out for them. Now, I'd like, if I may, to raise the tone, talk about something a little bit more adult, something a bit more sophisticated, something we can all relate to. Pornography. Now, um... <laughs> There's a man who knows exactly what I'm talking about there. Because, no, you see, I believe that most people lie about their use of pornography. Would you agree with that? Yeah. There's my fucking point. Right, look. <laughs> Let's do a test. Right, hands up if you're willing to admit that at some point in your lives you've watched a hardcore porn film. <laughs> I have to say, that is statistically unlikely. <laughs> Let's try the same question again, only this time with some element of honesty. Hands up if you've ever seen a... Even if it was just a snatch, if you've ever seen... <laughs> it's cheeky. But I'm just about getting away with it. Come on, look, just... One more time. If you've ever, ever, ever seen one, even if you just, you know... And so the Mexican wave of acceptance begins. <laughs> Did you see that? Everyone went... <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not a puff. <laughs> I don't want you people to think that I'm some sort of porn expert. I'm not... And think what you like. I, uh... No, I'm not, I'm not that interested in porn, uh, you know, per se. But, um... <laughs> But I do believe if you're going to talk about anything on stage, you really should do the research. So... <clears throat> recently, I had to sit through about 18 hours of top-class imported porn, and... Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, it's good now, isn't it, mate? Hey, you've got, you've got to take your hat off to it. 
and your trousers and your pants, obviously. <laughs> No, because they've got the scenery, the plots, the makeup, sometimes swimming pools behind the main actors. Proper actors and actresses doing the shagging, right? Uh, obviously, they're hoping for better work. <laughs> they're hoping some Hollywood agent's going to spot them and go, Hey, check his action. <laughs> he could be the new Brad Pitt. So if you watch these people carefully, they're, they're kind of auditioning for future work. I was watching one, and I, please, I'm not being gratuitous here, right? I'm just going to show you what I saw. Now, he... She appeared to be... Uh, he w All I can say is he was here and she was there. I think they call it taking her from behind. <laughs> All blank faces down the front here, but anyway. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just... Anyway, he was doing this, and... Uh, and uh, suddenly he just stopped and he went... To sleep, perchance to dream! <laughs> Is the rub for in that sleep of death what dreams may come? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then he just carried on. It was... It was absolutely seamless. <laughs> she was a bit pissed off, you know. <laughs> but she, she got her own back minutes later, because it, it was her turn. And, um... <clears throat> Some of you are ahead of me here, aren't you? She, she was doing this. Now, obviously, it wasn't a microphone. <laughs> she was going, Oh, you love snake. Oh, I want you. And then she suddenly stopped and went, oh, Is this a dagger I see before me? It's handled towards my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I've got to tell you, my mum would fucking kill me if she knew I was doing this. You see, it's her material, so... Uh... <laughs> oh, Dublin, you've been uh, extra lovely. Thank you very much. I've been Ben Norris. Good night. Cheers. <laughs> I've been in New York Can't understand your weather. Like, what's going on? Here? Sorry, could you uh, stop doing that, please? I'm, you know, trying to do some work here. How long are you going to be? Uh, just a few minutes. I just want to go over my notes. I'm going to be on. Hey, Luis. Are you My going to do that bit there? Why? You don't, you don't think it's funny? Well, we had another feckin' idiot in here last night. He did that gag. Didn't really work. Really? Hmm. Where are you from? From New York. New York, New York, New York. They don't like the Yankees here. Did you not see the field? No. Hmm? We had an American in here last night. He died on his arse. Lambs to the slaughter, slaughter, slaughter. Hello. How are you? You're looking well. Uh, yeah. Now you're saying uh, uh, I know your man from the telly, but uh, no, you're not. Good man. Yeah. But I know I've done a lot of earlier work. I don't know. You might know me from my early work. I used to be uh, the stunt double for Art Garfunkel. Uh, <laughs> and I, I did some uh, stunt work for Colin Meany, Deep Space Nine. <laughs> And uh, I also used to do a bit of stunt work for uh, Martin McGuinness. Uh... <laughs> but 
But as you can tell, I'm a, I'm a mad cat. I'm a rabid Catholic. You know, if I bite you, you'll turn Catholic. Seriously, now. But I'm mad for it. And jeez, I love the Pope. Isn't he great? Oh, the Pope is mad. Yes, good men, good chaps yourselves, yeah. Altar boys there now, yeah. But anyway, they're eight. But they're fantastic. The Pope is brilliant now because you know he's infallible. Now, you know what that means. It means you can't set fire to him. He's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely. All that white stuff he wears with the white hat, that's asbestos. Oh, there's no way. <laughs> but I don't know if you remember in the 70s, the Irish couldn't cross the road. We were useless. We didn't know how to cross the road. Did you remember that? We thought cars didn't hurt. And you go out. You thought they were made of plastic and you go out and say, oh God, that hurt. Oh God, you wouldn't think it. I thought it was a toy, you know. And the government uh, had to impose a code on us. And they called it the Safe Cross Code. Now who, there were two people headed it, or two characters headed it. There was Judge, what was he? The dog, dog, good, yeah. And then there was a uh, Mr. Crow, and what was he? The Crow, you're very clever, very good. And they say the Irish are thick, no way. But they didn't have legs and they were telling us how to cross the road. That was a big problem. But then there was a song to go with it called The Safe Cross Code. And yes, you could cheer now, but nobody knew it in the 70s, not one person. The papal nuncio and the president knew it. That's all now. That was all. They, we'd be standing at the side of the road there for half an hour, bursting for a piss, wanting to visit your granny, going, was it one, look for a safe place, two, don't hurry. Oh, very good. Stuck there going, what is it? One, look for a safe place. Two, don't hurry. Stop and wait. Three, look all around and listen. Before you cross, remember four, thou shalt not commit adultery. Eh? Oh. <laughs> thou shalt not cover the neighbours. Oh, God, what am I doing? And I was stuck there for hours now, and very few people knew. You learnt it off now, especially for tonight. Now, you hoors, yeah, come on. <laughs> no one knew it now, right? We were back in the Middle Ages. We had no economy in Ireland for years because of the Safe Cross Code. We couldn't go to work. We couldn't go to our grannies. There was no industry or commerce. We could have had a Celtic Tiger economy years ago without it, right? Now, I don't know if there's anyone in from Britain, no? Well, in Britain, right, what did they have? The Green Cross Code, right? The Green Cross Code, it was fronted by Darth Vader, who used to scare the kids across the road, right? <laughs> And then there was a, a Jimmy Savile used to front it, and he used to scare the kids across the road. That's right. Is that a cigar in your pocket, Jimmy? No. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> but how did the Green Cross Code go? Stop, look, and listen. Stop, look, and bloody listen. Stop, three words they were across that road, you know, in Britain. Very clever. That's how they built their empire. That's that thinking. <laughs> Genius, wasn't it? It was that simple. Three words. We were rhyming off the fucking catechism. That's what we were doing. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> yeah, no. But the worst thing about it was the British used to visit Ireland in the 1970s saying, oh, the Irish are a lazy bunch of no-goods. Right. <laughs> they just stand at the side of the road all day waving, right? <laughs> we were looking for fucking help. We were stuck. You should have stopped. Stop looking. Listen. God, thanks very much. Cheers. That's great. Thanks a million now. Great. Yeah. Anyway, listen. I think I have to end there. Eh? I blaspheme too much. So that's all for me. Thanks very much. Good night. Now, thanks. Good evening. If you've just joined us, Dustin the Turkey is stealing the show this evening at the lounge. Foul play is not suspected. Next up, babyface New Yorker Des Bishop, whose catchphrase is Yoda Man. Well, as the newsreader said to the bishop, Yoda Man, add a lady. Brrr, a very good night to you. I'm from New York and it's good to be here. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, I'm from New York and I'm really into hip hop. And, uh, you know, it's amazing because I grew up with like New York hip hop radio. And uh, it's amazing the difference between New York hip hop radio and the 
the hip hop radio experience I've had here in Ireland, you know? Because uh, I grew up on a, a diet of hip hop radio stations, something like, yo, what's up? This is Hot 97 representing the real flavors of hip hop and R&B. We just had a phone call in there from Shaniqua, Janiqua, and Latifah out there in the North Bronx. Yo, I want to give it out to Jerome down there in Brooklyn. Yo, represent. But I live in Ireland now, and the first place I ever came in Ireland was Cork. <laughs> I used to, I turn on the radio there one day, I hear this brilliant hip hop. What came on afterwards was a completely different story. <laughs> Went something like this. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hello! This is radio friendly here. 104.6 FM. <laughs> Shout out to all the fiends and the bjors and the cars in the area tonight. <laughs> Give us a call. <laughs> on 087. 451, 458. And don't tell the gals nothing, boy. <laughs> Fuck the law, boy. Sorry, sorry, what's that fin bear? <laughs> oh, sorry, you have to put a two in front of 451, 458. <laughs> we just had a phone call in there from Sinead, Neve, and Jacinta. <laughs> out there in Nocknahini. <laughs> they want to give a shout out to Bobby and Seamus <laughs> down on Blarney Street. <laughs> Their message is. Hurry up with the York boy, I'm dying for one. <laughs> Being from New York, I always wanted to be a hip hop star, as I was saying, and well, I moved to Ireland, and that screwed things up a little bit there. <laughs> not, your, not much of an indigenous hip hop market, but you know, I figured the home of hip hop in America is the ghetto. I went to the ghetto over here in Ireland, man. I went to the flats and I hooked up with some boys and we put together a rap. That's right, I represent it for the flats because they don't get properly represented. <laughs> And we wrote this rap, it's called I Wanna Say, and it's about my experiences of living here in Dublin. And it's dedicated to all the fine ladies up the front. <laughs> here we go, y'all. from New York I always wanted to be a hardcore hip-hop gangster MC but there are problems that are plain to see all you gotta do is look and listen to me here's the first problem so away we go I'm middle class not from the ghetto I ain't never called a bitch a hoe but obviously you see I'm not black although that might be nice because my dick would grow old <laughs> Here's another problem that I have to date. You see, I no longer live in New York State. I moved countries and I thought it was great, but it's hard to be a rapper living in Dublin 8. <laughs> my accent's gone funny. I don't know what to say when I see my friends coming down my way. I wanna say, yo, what's up, money? What's going down? But I say, early. <laughs> what's the sturdy? <laughs> Is that <Antoine> or don't? <laughs> And then people laugh at me, because they think it's a yawn that an American sounds like he's from Dolphin's Bomb, but I can't handle people laughing. I got to exclaim the rage, but the words that come out are all deranged. Don't want to say, yo, bitch ass, I'll mess you up, I. Right? <laughs> but I say, are you looking for the straightener, you fucking gobshoe? <laughs> What rapper has an applause in the middle of his rap? <laughs> you think I can memorize it with a clap in the middle? <laughs> Sucker Dublin MCs try to step to me. Not that there's many, but I still want supremacy. I want to say, step off, motherfucker. To me, this is a dottle. But I say, go away out of that, you fucking pox bottle. <laughs> with the women, sometimes I do sound like a fool. I want to be New York rap star, crazy, sexy, cool. I want to say, yeah, baby, that's my car. You want to see inside? But I say, hell yeah, are you come for the ride? Right? I'll tell you, living in Rialto, it ain't no joke with Mary Harney's unemployed army all on heroin and coke. They come up behind me and they do give me a poke and say, <laughs> I 
And he was laughing. So I'm the new self crowned king of the Dublin gangster rap scene, the hardcore motherfucker, MC Jackie. Peace, thanks very much. Bloody comedians, they haven't a fucking clue. And they wouldn't know a good joke if it smacked them in the face. Do you want to hear a good joke, do you? I have a good joke for you. Here you go, look, Mary McAleese. <laughs> There's a good joke for you. You should see what she's done to my oars. Hey you, bewitched. Do you want a bit of advice, do you? You're the new young Manana Heron. I'll give you a bit of advice about the fear in a heron. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Do you get my drift, do you? No, you haven't a second clue. Here, lady boy, what'll you give me for that? Huh? Will you give me another slammer for that? Will you go on? I dare you, you feckin' idiot. Thank you very much. Good evening, Athlone. There's always one. There's always one. Now, I just want to say that because people in Athlone are going to go, have we got a comedy club in the town? Fuck me. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's nice to be home anyway, you know? Anyway, it's good to be here, and um, I was thinking about uh, I was thinking about Humpty Dumpty, and I've just worked out what happened. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. And I thought, well, they shouldn't have given the horses first go. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a mad regiment was that? <laughs> I mean, fancy giving a horse an egg to fix. <laughs> Can you fix this, Dublin? <laughs> You're a fucking liar, Dublin. Well, the... <laughs> what are we going to tell the children? <laughs> oh, those, uh, you know those cameras that you can buy that uh, don't give you red eyes? They don't work. <laughs> Took one out last night, went on the piss, woke up this morning, fucking red eyes. <laughs> Had it in my pocket all night. I stopped drinking actually there for a while, for 10 years. No, I don't drink anywhere actually, yeah. But uh, the thing is, I, lo I lost my license. When I, when I was drinking, I lost my license. Anybody here drunk driving? Yeah. You lying bastards. <laughs> Honestly, no, I mean, I hold my hands up to it, you know? Actually, that's what I was doing when I was driving. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm not proud of it, but I, you know, it wasn't drunk driving, it was paralytic driving. I shouldn't have been sitting in an armchair. And actually, I was so drunk in the car that I actually forgot I was in the car for a bit and tried to hail a cab. Taxi! Taxi! You never get a fucking taxi when you want one. Ah! Then the taxi man stopped and I went, Oh no, I've got a car. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. That's what drink makes you do, you know. And I was, dr I was driving home from, from, uh, from Clapham to Twickenham, where, where I live in London, and, and I'm driving, and it's about four miles, and I'm driving down the 316, which was wrong because uh, I was drunk. How did I know? I didn't know where I was. <laughs> Should have been the A4, but anyway, I was in the 316. It was four o'clock in the morning. I'm driving along, <laughs> right? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm d I, I could see you twicking him half a mile, and I thought, I'm doing really well. Ha! <laughs> doing really well. <laughs> Nearly home. But I was only doing 12 miles an hour. <laughs> and I was stopped by the police. And they didn't even have a car. 
They just walked alongside the curly guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think he's pissed, Sarge. <laughs> said, excuse me, mate. Would you mind stepping out of your car, please? And I went, what is this speed? You must be fucking joking. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tony. That's all for me. Good night. audience that's all from the lounge for this week uh, you've been watching ben norris patrick mcdonald desi bishop and owen o'neill i'm deirdre kane if you're driving take the car good night <laughs>